right. Uh, my name is Chip. Uh, I've been driving my DB4 GT Aston Martin Zagato. Uh, the car is a 1961 car. It uh, was one of 19 made on the DB4 GT chassis by Zagato. Uh, it's a sublime shape and interestingly was commercially unsuccessful at the time. It seems to have stood the test of time a little bit better so that people appreciate it now more. Uh, this car uh, has never been comprehensively restored. It's, uh, with the exception of the paint and mechanical refurbishment, uh, it is original. The history of the car is really more as a test vehicle for Dunlop as they were developing their disc brakes for sports racing cars back then. And uh, for, I think, 20 or 30,000 miles, Dunlop used the, the car as a test mule. I've had the car for about five years now, and uh, I enjoy racing and, and driving many different types of cars. This is very unique. Uh, I've run it at the Goodwood Revival. Uh, it is. Uh, it competed directly with the uh, the 250 GT short wheelbase Berlinetta Ferrari at the time. Uh, I've had the good fortune to be able to drive both, uh, and they each have their their own qualities. Um, if I could sort of differentiate between the two, the thing that makes this. Uh, competitive is really less its chassis and more its engine. It develops more horsepower and torque than the short wheelbase, but gives up a little bit in the way of balance. This car has a 3.7 liter inline double overhead cam six cylinder engine. Uh, it has four wheel disc brakes. Uh, it has a Watts link rear suspension. Um, and, uh, and, and for, the, for its period, actually goes very, very well. This car is putting out, I'm guessing, 330, 340 horsepower, which is at least as much as it put out in the time. And it can certainly get your attention when you're driving it fast. Uh, really, what we do when we're driving a car in an event like this is, is go through two or three weeks of preparation. Uh, if you look at the seats, for example, in the DB4 GT, uh, they're wallowy, they're almost like a limousine. And so the first thing that we took out, of course, were the seats. We put proper racing seats in, proper harnesses. Uh, and then we uh, just made sure that everything was crack checked, uh, that the pads were new, that the rotors were not cracked, um, and that the fluid levels were fine. Beyond that, there's really not a lot that, that we do with the car. One of the best experiences I've had with the car really was racing it at the Goodwood Revival. Uh, the car is such a sublime shape and to be in that atmosphere where everything looks period, you don't have to squeeze your eyes closed too much to imagine precisely what it would have been like. And I, I actually brought my family and my three relatively young boys and they enjoyed it as much as I did. The things I love the most about this car, I'd love to say was the performance, but to be very honest, it's how it looks. There is not a bad angle on the car anywhere. I get up in the morning, I look at it, back, front, top, down. It is absolutely wonderful. It is just a gorgeous rolling piece of machinery. And secondarily, you know, the almost the James Bond-esque, you know, 1960-era bon vivant. I mean, it's, uh, you know, you feel a little bit like that when you're back in the car driving it.